Hi, welcome back. Now we're going to talk about depth of field. And while arguably not an element of composition itself, its effect on all the other elements of composition is so great that it should be well understood. Now, depth of field is basically the range of optical focus in a photo. With the proper controls, you can have almost everything in your photo in focus, or just a very small region. A quick look at a couple of simple diagrams can make this much more clear. In this example, we have a large depth of field. Everything from about 1 to 9 meters is in focus. Foreground, midground, and background would all appear sharply in focus. In this example, we have a shallow depth of field. Only a small portion, the midground, from 5 to 6 meters is in focus. Everything in front of and behind that would appear soft and out of focus. The visual impact of this is quite striking. A shallow depth of field can make a difference between a plain old picture of someone and a beautiful portrait shot. It's also very useful if you don't have an interesting or pretty background to place your subject in front of. By creating a very soft, out of focus background, an otherwise ugly collection of lines or shapes can become a soft, abstract image that puts emphasis on the sharply focused subject. It's also good at avoiding bad juxtaposition, making lines that would otherwise look like antenna growing out of someone's head into soft, less noticeable lines. So, controlling this. Initially, this can be a little bit tricky, but with a bit of practice, it will become almost second nature. To control the depth of field involves using a combination of aperture, focal length, focus, and the positioning of your subject relative to the camera and the background. Let's take a look at the effect of aperture first. To see the effect aperture has on depth of field, try this exercise. Set up a shot with the subject in the foreground preferably with your camera on a tripod so that you can take the exact same photo multiple times. Focus on the subject. In this case, I focused on the figurine on the right in the foreground. Take a series of photos starting at your widest aperture and closing it down one f-stop per shot. You will see, as the aperture closes down, more and more of the photo comes into focus. At no point has the camera been refocused, it's solely the effect of aperture. A good way to remember this is to think of the aperture number as how much of the photo will be in focus. At f22, a lot of the picture will be in focus. At f2.8, only a small amount of the photo will be in focus. To simplify this process, put your camera in aperture priority mode, where you'll have to change your shutter speed for each shot. Aperture priority will automatically do this for you. So clearly, aperture has a huge effect on depth of field. But you don't always have the ability to use whatever f-stop you want. Say you're in very bright or very dark conditions. You're kind of limited. So here's where focal length comes into play. Focal length can be used to enhance a shallow depth of field. The general rule is, the longer the lens, the less depth of field. Or conversely, the wider the lens, the more depth of field. Let's take a look at the basic process for achieving a shallow depth of field in a portrait type shot. We we'll use this photo as an example. This was shot at 60 millimeters, so not a particularly long lens, but when combined with an f4.5 aperture and set up properly, the shallow depth of field is achieved. Notice the soft, out of focus background. Firstly, select a long lens, usually 60 millimeters and up, but the longer the lens, the better. Then, put as much distance as you can between the camera and the subject. This will depend on the framing you wish to use and how much space you'll have or any obstacles that may get in your way. Also, put as much distance as possible between the subject and the background. Select the widest aperture you can, the smallest f-stop number. This will affect your exposure, so adjust your shutter speed accordingly, but try to keep it around a hundredth of a second or faster. Now, focus on your subject and take your photo. Conversely, if you want a very large depth of field, simply use the opposite of this process, wider lenses and a smaller aperture. It's generally a lot easier to achieve a large depth of field. In fact, it's kind of what usually happens when you just take a photo and don't think about it anyway. But, control the depth of field is an incredibly powerful tool to have at your disposal. So, practice these exercises often, and pretty soon you'll find achieving your desired effect quite simple.